know alive or what? Say. Doing all right? <laughs> Good. If you're outside, come on in the house, man. Last week we had church in the yard. How many were with us last week? Let's thank the Lord for that. I thought we did pretty good last week. We made it, baby. Well, the uh, building took quite a bit of damage. Our roof over here peeled back, the membrane, so got a lot of water. So if you're on about the fifth or sixth row, you were underwater in this building. Yeah. And got Congressman Stuby and his wife today. Your first name? <laughs> Jennifer? Yep. Greg and Jennifer is with us here on the front row, and I was one. I, I preached the first service, so I had a message ready, just in case. But I'm glad they're here. We're going to have a great day today. Amen. So come on in the house. But anyway, this building took damage. You can see it. We took the carpet out in the back. But I was just real thankful. Most of this church is concrete floors, like under the seats and up top and out in the foyer. Some drywall damage, obviously, some electrical stuff. But the biggest thing is the roof. It's as big as a football field, okay? So it's not a small task. We're still having people look at that. We got it reasonably dried in, but it's still, it's still water's coming in. Big old rain we had yesterday, but it's, it's not earth shattering. We can handle it. Say we can handle it. Will you say that? Amen. Come on. I wore my Lemon Bay wrestling shirt today and uh, had several of the wrestlers come out from Lemon Bay High School and help me and Coach Schick we, and some others pull up carpet. But I also like this because this speaks of who we are in Inglewood and Northport and Venice. Uh, this is the Lemon Bay area, amen, yes or no? And we're strong people and we're good people. You hear me or not? Say. And you're making it. You're doing awesome. So I'm glad you're here today. Looking forward to a great time. So if you're out in the yard, get, get more than people in here. What are they doing out there talking? Come on. Anyway, let's get up on our feet. Let's have church, amen? Come on. Glad you're here. If it's your first time, I'm Pastor Gary. I go ahead and start every time and say, I know I'm a little weird, nod, but you know what? I like me. And, and you know, if, if, if I can come, that means you must be allowed here too. Amen. Say, we just want you to be you. Church can make you something you're not. Tell you how to dress. Tell you how to do this. Tell you how to do that. Listen, God made you fearfully and wonderfully. He loves a snot out of you. He gave his son for you. We don't want you to leave today. Get in that car. Turn that key. Lost, not knowing if you die, you're going to heaven. You hear me? I want you to make sure today that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. Not the church, not the preacher, not you, but He's my Savior. He's my Lord. He died for me. He loves me. Say that out loud. He what? He loves me. Amen. We're going to have church this morning. We're going to sing today. Amen. But I'm thrilled you're here. And what an honor to have uh, Congressman Stubbe and Miss Jennifer with us this morning. And y'all live up in Bradenton area? Sarasota? Great. Well, I'm in Sarasota County. So just, just home folk. Can you say that out loud? We just what? We're home folk. Let's have church. Let's put our hands together. Thank God you live in America. And don't give up on your country. Don't give up. You be strong. And I don't mean to be ugly, but most people I've seen coming and helping didn't come from Washington. They came from across the state. They came from other states in this country. And they came to help us. Amen. Good people. Don't give up. Ever. Amen. Come on. Good old crowd. Hey, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, Greg, they, I think they like you better than me. A little more than we normally have. But I think people are excited. People are excited to have a man who and his wife who are are Christians. We all, we all have a fallen nature. We're all sinners. But for somebody that's not ashamed to say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're just excited. We're, we're glad to be here in church. Aren't we, church? Come on. Ready? All our band's not here today, but we got, we got plenty. We got enough today. And uh, my son, Mitch, has picked out some pretty good songs with the team together. You got some great songs. We're going to go old school. We call it old school with an old contemporary song, Shout to the Lord. Amen. Let's sing it, and you'll see the song selection today is great. One more time, let's thank God we're in church. Here we go. We're getting ready now. Let's go. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. My Jesus. My Savior, Lord, there is none like you. 
all of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the sound of your name. Oh, I sing for joy at the word Amen. Praise of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Jesus, Come on, church. my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort. So let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Here we go, church, come on. Oh, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I see for joy at the word of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise. Praise the Lord. You folks are singing today. I love that. I mean, got another great song. It's, uh, what do you do when crap happens? You raise sing a hallelujah. Amen, yes or no? Amen. Let's sing this song. We raise a hallelujah. You know, during that storm, I had a crank radio. And I, we were just we were cranking, cranking out, baby. And, Come yeah, on, let's go. Great. Sing this song. Here we go. Lifting up praise. Amen. 
Glad you're here today, guys. Appreciate you. I will raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I will raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Oh, I will raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Yeah. I'll raise a hallelujah. Cause heaven comes to fight for me. Oh. I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praise.
stuff, guys. Amen. Praise the Lord with me this morning, church. Good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Got some more great music coming and uh, going to do an old song that Mitch sang when he was like 11 years old. And boy, does it ever have new meaning. It's called Sometimes He Calms the Storm. And that's coming up in just a bit. But again, thank you. If you're watching online, as many of you are, thank you so much for tuning in today. You're part of us. And to jot us a note right now on Facebook or wherever and let us know you're out there. And But a good crowd today. Appreciate your being here. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for loving us. Lord, thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us in our sin. And Lord, you did it all. Thank you for taking my sin, my shame on you and going to a cross for me, for us. And uh, Lord, I pray today again, Lord, I just pray that everyone here will know in their heart that they know you as their Savior and Lord. And Lord, we don't want to have church without you. What a waste it would be if you're not here. But Lord, we know you are here. We're two or three are gathered in your name. And Jesus, we're here in your name. We love you because you love us and we're not ashamed of you. And we want you in our midst today to walk up and down these aisles and touch hearts today and meet needs as only you can, Lord. But Lord, we fall at your feet. We give you praise. Looking forward to an incredible time. Thank you for your blessings on us, Lord. Though we've had struggles and some hard times, Lord, you've blessed us. You're good to us. Thank you for your kindness to us, Lord. And we fall at your feet again. I ask you to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Thank you so much, Mr. Alexander Christie. How you doing, buddy boy? Man, my arm is shot from working. Man, it is shot. So I can't even shake hands. Terrible. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? What a great looking crowd. Thank you for being here this morning. We're so grateful for you being here this morning. And if today's your first time here, normally we'd give you like a little worship guide that you'd get in when you're coming in, but we didn't get that done this week because of printing issues and all kinds of internet issues like many of you understand. Uh, we'll be hopefully back on track next Sunday, but if today's your first time here, do us a favor, please, and go up, meet us out at the Welcome Center. We'll ask you for just for a little bit of info. We're going to give you a gift bag. And the reason we want that info is to thank you for being here this week, sending you a note of encouragement as well as a postcard whenever a big event is coming up. Uh, we promise not to bother you otherwise. And, and also, well, that little gift bag has some cool sunglasses in it, a little notepad, pens, some info about the church. Uh, just really, really appreciate it. Watch FC Live. Thank you for everyone tuning in online this morning. Thank you so much for uh, watching with us live. Uh, if you don't mind, don't, don't forget to put this in your browser and kind of lock it in there, bookmark it. That way uh, you, you can still connect with us if Facebook ever decides to give us the boot. And on Mondays, Mond uh, we're going to be having the men's Bible study starting up right. tomorrow, gentlemen. So if you have not signed up yet and you want some normalcy, you want to get back on a schedule, uh, block out this time every week for the next couple of weeks. So studying the Holy Spirit, uh, we just really can't encourage you enough to plug into this, guys. Please sign up on your way out today. And ladies, um, same thing on Monday night. We're going to have a, 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 book on, a study on the book of Hosea. Please do us a favor, sign up for this. It's a great thing. Uh, men can go to theirs, ladies go to theirs, and then they finish up around the same time. And ladies, if Tuesday night works better for you, we're going to have another class doing the same exact book of on Hosea um, on Tuesday. So sign up on your way out and plug in this week to a great Bible study. Uh, and also, just so you know, we got lots of Bible studies nearly every day of the week. If, if those don't fit for your schedule, give us a call. We'll fit you in. We'll let you know what's going on, fill you in on all the information possible, and uh, just give us a call at the office, please. Friend to Friend will be back on Tuesday, so if you or anyone you know is looking to make some friends, play some board games, make some connections here at Fellowship Church, come on out on a Tuesday afternoon. It'll be a, a, a huge blessing to you, and you'll have a chance to be a blessing to everybody else, too. And Grief Share on Wednesday nights at 4.30 right here at the church. If you or anyone you know is going through the grieving process, can't encourage you enough to plug into this. Uh, they're going to be starting 
from the very beginning, very, very soon. It was supposed to be a few weeks ago, but obviously things happen. So we are going to get ready to kick that off here either this Wednesday or the following Wednesday. Uh, but it's just a great opportunity to, 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 to heal your heart a bit. And also right after that, come on out and have that, that meal with our Celebrate Recovery Fellowship Recovery at 6 o'clock. And then come in here for some awesome music at 6.30 and you have a chance just to uh, just soak up, the, soak up the music and then listen to the word, some testimony time, a chance for you to get closer with the Lord. Uh, if anyone is going through anything with your hurts, any hangups, any struggles in your life, Celebrate Recovery, Fellowship Recovery wants to line up right beside you and help you through that process. So come on out on a Wednesday. We'd love to have you. And next week at the Higgs home outside, they're going to be having a fun barbecue time, just a really, really great time for our blast and fuel groups, which is our middle school, high school group. I would love for you to plug into that. If, if you have any kids in that age group, invite your neighbors, tell them about it. Uh, Miss Jen will be back here in room three or room four after the service if you need directions to her home. Um, it's just going to be a great, great time. So don't forget next Sunday at the Higgs. And then trunk or treat on Halloween. We are going to fill the parking lot up with cars. And we want to just bless these kids that come through here. They're all going through crazy stuff. School's been out. It's getting ready to kick on a little bit for some of the schools locally. But we want some normalcy for the kids. And we want a chance to love on those kids. So if you want to be a part of this, please sign up with Miss Kim after the service. You can decorate your car. You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, we just want to have a lot of fun. You can wear costumes. Bring a ton of candy. If you're not going to make it and be a part of it that day. Bring candy next week and the week after. Uh, that way we can really sugar those little kids up before we, we send them home. All right, so please, please come on out. It'd be a great time. And this is our town. Thank you so much for all of you that wear the shirts. Amen, amen. We have a whole new understanding of what our town now is, don't we? You see that Englewood Strong thing popping up here and there. And I tell you what, I, I, I see people helping each other in ways that they've never helped each other before. People that are, are putting off their own homes to help their neighbor. And it's the Lord just showing up, and he's showing up through you. So thank you, thank you for being servants of the Lord. And another way you can help is by throwing on a shirt, putting a bumper sticker on the back of your car. Our billboards blew down. I mean, they're toast. It, it looks like like pickup sticks over there. So we need your help to point people here so Pastor Gary can tell people about Jesus. So please, wear the shirts, put on a hat, put on a smile, and be the best you you can be out in the community. So please help us out with that. And as always, we thank you so very much for giving at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. And, uh, you know, we, we have some things. We got work to do here now. And if you're able to give and, and just help us with that, we can't thank you enough. Uh, Give2fc.com, super easy way to give online. You can do a one-time gift, weekly gift, monthly gift, however you'd like to do it. And... Uh, you know, many of you have been doing that for quite some time. Many of you tithe through that now, and we thank you for that. And everyone online, thank you so very much for your notes of encouragement through that P.O. box. And many of you tithe to us as well through that. It's so very, very uh, appreciated. God bless you all. Have an incredible day, and we'll look forward to seeing you. Hey, you're good, Father. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate all the work that Alex is doing and has done, and... Uh, I was able to see him and his whole family about 23 years ago come to Christ at our former ministry that we had, and uh, it was beautiful. And then we started this church in our house, of all things, in Old Inglewood. And uh, who was there? Who popped up in the house? Alex. Just a young joker and his family. And uh, then a few years later, a couple of years later, I hired him. Amen? And he's our administrator and just does whatever. But what a help he is. Paul had Timothy in the Bible. Gary has Alex. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. Amen. It's huge. Huge. Anyway, I'm going to go old school with you for a little bit. And uh, back in the day, in the late 90s, this song came out, what, 96 maybe or something like that. And that would have put you at about how old? 97, you'd have been about 10 years old. Yeah, yeah, sure. You've been about 10 years old, and uh, he's been singing. Oh, i got so many fingers. So. Yeah, I know. I'm good at math, okay? I'm good at it. But uh, he's been singing with me. My son, since he was about, well, about two years old, I'd put him on a chair. And then uh, it was really thrilling one day when he could stand all the way up, and you could see him behind the <laughs> pulpit back in the day. But this is one that uh, 
I remember you singing as a boy. And this, this song takes new meaning now with the storm, with this storm we went through. And uh, I think it's pretty rich, pretty deep song. It Amen. is. It's got awesome lyrics. And yeah, the storm, I mean, there's so many storm metaphors in a lot of the music that we do here. I don't know if it's like that everywhere else, but <laughs> we're on the water. We have, I love, I love storms, personally. I mm. love thunderstorms, lightning, I love all that stuff. So I do a lot of music with it in it, but yeah, after Ian, it's definitely got a lot more meaning to it. So. Hey man, we're going to do an old song, and Miss Karen would have been the one that played it way back in the day, probably for Mitchell. And we're just so blessed to have them today. And Sherry's going to pitch in and help. Let's thank the Lord for them. Can we do that? Tell them we love them and appreciate them. For too long, a quickly blue skies can go dark, and gentle winds grow strong. Suddenly, fear is like wild water pounding on the soul, but still, we sail on, knowing that our Lord is in control. Sometimes he calms the storm With a whisper, peace be still He can settle any sea But it doesn't mean he will Sometimes he holds us close Lest the wind and waves go wild Sometimes he calms the storm other times he calms his child. He has a reason for each trial that we pass through in life. And though we're shaking, we cannot be torn apart from Christ no matter how the driving rain beats down on those who hold the faith a heart of trust will always be a quiet peaceful place sometimes he calms the storm with a whisper peace be still he can settle any sea, but it doesn't mean he will. Sometimes he holds us close, lest the wind and waves go wild. Sometimes he calms the storm, and other times he calms his child. With a whisper, peace be still, he can settle any sea, but it doesn't mean he will. Sometimes he holds us close, unless the wind and waves go out. Sometimes he calms the storm, and other times he calms his child. What a blessing. Amen. Come on. What a blessing. Thank you. Appreciate you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Great job. Beautiful old song. Amen. Let's jump on up, guys. Get on your feet one more time. Get some blood moving. Amen. Come on. Amen. One more song this morning. And uh, what is the name of it? Peace. Peace be still. Peace be still. Good. Amen. I love this song. We'll have our offering right after this, guys. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship Church. 
Uh, we got a big renovation. It looks pretty good in here. It doesn't look anything like it did look. We've had people just working, volunteers helping, cleaning, and then recleaning and doing and trying to make it comfortable for you today so that we could use this place. Uh, we've got a big task ahead of us, a big renovation project. It's not an old building, but we got a big roof separation up here that lets water in. And though it's been repaired, it's still got some leaking going on. And uh, so the next weekend, not this weekend, but the following two weeks, all the entire offering will go to help us with our renovation. Y'all got that clear? Yes or no? Amen? So not this weekend. This weekend's offering goes to help meet the needs of our ministry and what we're doing. But fortunately, October has five Sundays. Can you say five? Five! Amen. So that gives us a chance to have two offerings. I'm going to ask you to be generous uh, over the next couple of weekends and uh, just help us. Help us. But... Only if you can do it cheerfully. If you can't give it cheerfully, we ask you to keep it. If it takes us longer, it takes us longer. But we'll get there with people that really want to jump in. And uh, I, I want the Lord to be blessed by us. Amen. And uh, to see us and to say, wow, look at them. Amen. And so we're a debt-free ministry here. We built all this debt-free, and that's the way we'll continue to do it. And uh, Congressman, we didn't have the wind. We didn't have the flood. We didn't have all that here. So this is us. We're going to raise this. And that's what we're going to do. Not everybody has the family I have. Look at my big family, amen? Look at my big family. Not everybody has this family, amen. And as much as I appreciate FEMA and insurance companies, honest to goodness, guys, I'd rather have you. I'd rather have you. I'd rather have you. I, I know you love us and you believe in us. And this is your church. And uh, so together we'll rise up, amen? So today's offering goes to meet the needs of this ministry. If you want to go ahead and get a jump start, had somebody come out of the office the other day, wrote a check for $20,000. Now, that's only one. Don't think there's a bunch of them. But yeah, thank the Lord. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Not everybody can do those kind of things. But I'm just telling you, we're getting a jump start. Amen. If you want to jump start that a little bit today, you need to mark that on your check. But that's coming up in just a bit. But before we do that, let's sing one last song. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the waves I don't want to be afraid I don't want to be afraid I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it roar I don't want to fear the storm I don't want to fear the storm Please be still Say the word and I will Set my feet upon the sea Till I'm dancing in the deep Yeah, peace be still You are here so it is well Even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks I'm not gonna be afraid Cause these waves are only Come on, waves church. I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna fear the storm You are greater than its roar I'm not gonna fear the storm No, I'm not gonna fear it Oh, oh peace, peace, death and I will set my feet upon the sea Till I'm dancing in the deep Yeah, peace, be still You are here so it is well Even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks Peace
faith rise up oh heart believe let faith rise up in me there you go church sing it come on let faith rise up oh heart thank you Lord. believe let faith rise up in me sing it out let faith rise up oh heart believe so let faith rise up in me oh let faith rise up oh heart I'm dancing in the deep blood. Peace, be still. You are here, so it is well. Even when my eyes can't see, I will trust the voice that speaks. Peace, yes, Lord. Peace, of oh, me. Amen. Thank you, guys. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain standing as we have our prayer for offering this morning. Coach, come on up and pray for us, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, love this guy. Love what you said about the Marine Corps. And it taught you, taught you how to be strong, how to stand up during tough times. Man, but I love this guy. One of my best friends on the planet. Security at Lemon Bay High School, coach at Lemon Bay High School, and uh, we just really, really appreciate all you guys here today. But, Coach, thank you. Pray for us, buddy. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as the pastor preached in the first service about being blessed, blessed. we are so blessed oh. to be here in this town, in this community. Wow. Been here for over 30 years now, and it's, it's my home, Lord, and wow. we thank you for the blessings you've given us church and yes. even though we have some mineral damage here in the church it's costly but we know you have blessed us for almost 20 years Absolutely. now lord and you just continue to bless and we thank you for the blessings lord we thank you for the congressman and his wife to come out and take their time out to come here and share a word that you've blessed him with lord and the blessings you've given his family and everything he represents us he represents this town, and, yes. and we know he's doing a great job, and we thank you for everything that he's done, Lord. Just Amen. ask you to continue to bless him and his family and his community, Lord. We Amen. thank you for everything you do. We ask you to bless this offering, thank multiply you. it, use it for your needs today, Lord. And we just thank you. We ask to bless the giver. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, buddy boy. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Amen. Y'all be seated. Thanks again for giving today. You're a blessing, especially if you're watching online. Thank you for giving. You do it often, and you're a big help. If you want to give for this roof project and the water damage and things that we've suffered, you might want to make a gift like that. Just mark it. You can do that online. We appreciate it. Appreciate anything you do, anything. But again, only do it if you can do it 
Because you feel good about it, okay? I want you to feel really good about when you give here, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless you. Let's thank the Lord for Miss Karen and everybody serving us today. Amen. Appreciate you. All of you. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're here again. And uh, usually I preach. I'm very loud and, you know, a little bit odd. But anyway, I'm glad to have uh, Congressman Greg Stubbe with us today. You might wonder, how would you come to have him today? Was it because of Ian and all that stuff you called him? No, no, no. Uh Uh-uh. just worked out that way. I was at an event in Charlotte County, and uh, down at the big event center in Punta Gorda, and uh, I love the sheriff of Charlotte County. I also love the sheriff of Sarasota. They're, they're both my friends, and matter of fact, Kurt's from here. He's from Inglewood, the sheriff of Sarasota, so I've known him for years. So I went down there to that event. They wanted me to pray. You know, they bring in somebody like me to pray, you know. So I came down there to do that, and I had a nice dinner. It was nice, and, uh, but... I was praying after him. He got up and spoke, and he's speaking to police officers and firemen, people like that. And I'm like, my goodness, that man's using Scripture. This is strange. wasn't a spiritual event, per se, and did such a good job. Then I got up to pray, and I'm like, wow. And I even said, I was like, man, that guy just preached. I thought that was my job. But uh, he did such a good job. It touched my heart, really, to be honest with you, and it gave me some hope about our country, to be honest. Some hope, some hope. Come on. Lord, help us. You know? So I told him, I said, I want you to come at him. I said, I want you to come sometime and preach. I don't know if you remember this or what I said. I'm odd. I know you probably, I probably stood out. But anyway, but uh, so then somebody got in contact with his office and they said, well, sure, he'll come do that. And it just happened to be today after the big storm. So perfect timing, right? Come on. Praise the Lord. So welcome our congressman uh, in Washington. Not one of my favorite places, but that's another story. But uh, Mr. Greg Stubbe is in the house. Come on. Look at that. Look at that support. You got support down south. You got support down here. You're in the country. There you go. Get it. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, it's an honor to be at a church where 
footwear is optional. I saw that, and I'm like, there's some people in my neighborhood that'll come to this church just so they know they don't have to wear shoes up here. I leaned over to my wife, and I'm like, there's a whole family of people that don't like wearing shoes that would love to be here in our neighborhood. So thank you for having me. Um, you know, when Pastor Gary asked me, he, he kind of hit on this, but when he asked me to, to speak, um, and we actually spoke on the phone beforehand, kind of, you know, because he didn't want me to get up here and say things that... Uh, he didn't know what direction I was going to go. So we had a conversation about it. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, how the Lord and the Holy Spirit works. When we discussed what I was going to talk about, I was going to talk on spiritual warfare. Um, Jen and I have, uh, I guess, what would you would call a ministry on spiritual warfare. And uh, we talked about that, and that, that's what I wanted to hit on. And then Ian happened and uh, obviously changed what I think the message today needs to be on. So as Proverbs 16.9 says, we can make our plans like we made, but the Lord determines our steps. So what I originally planned to share with you today has changed. As our world has changed, our properties have changed, our houses have changed, and our perspectives have changed, for God has determined our steps. I mean, I, I share with you, I've, got, I've still got, you know, stuff on my knuckles from messing with the shingles on my house. There was a lady whose fingers cut because she's, she's probably working around her yard. And uh, we're, all, we're all doing that because of what we just went through. And I wouldn't feel right about myself if I didn't give you necessary information in my job. So before she sits down, Sydney, just raise your hand real quick. That is my district director. Um, if you have a claim as it relates to, yeah, give her a round of applause. So before I get into what I want to talk about, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't give you necessary information to help you. So my office is here to help. That is my job. My job is to ensure that you have what you need as it relates to the federal government and you have what we need in this district. Uh, if you have FEMA issues, a FEMA claim, which probably almost everybody in this room does, um, go to stubby.house.gov forward slash hurricane. It has all the information that you need. Our phone number in our office is 941-499-3214. I don't have to repeat it, just go to our website, all the information is there. Sydney is here if you have questions today. It's better to ask her than it is to ask me because she knows how to do all the cases and deal with the agencies. Um, so she would be better to answer those questions. There is also a DRC, a Disaster Recovery Center in Northport, and they moved the one in, uh, here in Charlotte County to Tringali Rec Center on North Access Road in Inglewood. It's like four miles from here. So it's actually better for you if you go to one of those DRCs because a FEMA rep is there. If you have started your application, they'll help you start it. If you haven't started it, they'll help you complete it. So I would encourage you to go to one of those DRCs four miles down the road uh, so I wouldn't feel like I'd be doing my job if I didn't tell you that today. If you don't get our emails, you don't get our updates, I would encourage you to do that as well. stubby.house.gov, the very first thing that pops up is emails. I send out everything that I do for the week, every TV hit that I've been on, every radio ad that our radio, radio spot I've been on, so you know exactly what I'm working on, what's going on in Washington. Thank God I'm here and not up there. And uh, so if you don't get our emails, make sure you do that. I've lived in Florida my entire life. My, my family's been here for generations. On my dad's side of the family, my great-great-grandfather came down to Sarasota. On my mom's side of the family, my great-great-grandfather um, was in the central part of Florida. And having lived here my entire life, talking to my family members that are still here, my parents are still with us, um, I have never seen the devastation that we've seen in this community. We've seen it in other places, Mike, Michael hit the panhandle, but I have never seen the devastation that, that we have seen here in Southwest Florida. And what God put on my heart and, and reminded me of Nehemiah and the story of Nehemiah. When Nehemiah was told that the wall in Jerusalem was broken down and its gates had been burned, he sat down and he wept. For days, he mourned. And he prayed. And it was tough. We've all seen it at our house, but driving through the devastation on the way here. So it's okay to mourn. It's okay to feel lost. 
And he fasted and he prayed before the God of heaven for days at the destruction. And after days of mourning and prayer, he confessed the sins of his people. He confessed his sins and he confessed his family sins. And in Nehemiah 1.7 it says, we have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed your commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. And he repented and he turned towards the Lord. And we all need to do that. Not just for ourselves, but for our family and for our nation. There is a time in Scripture that our Lord Jesus also wept. And in Luke 19.41, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and he saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes, the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus wept because he knew it was to come, because the Jewish leaders had rejected their Messiah and refused God's offer of salvation in Jesus when they were visited by God himself. And soon, their nation would suffer the consequence. Just like our nation is suffering. Forty years after Jesus said those words, they came true. Roman soldiers attacked Jerusalem and broke through the northern wall. They laid siege to it, and in A.D. 70, They were able to enter the city and burn it to the ground. If a nation rejects God and his teachings, your nation will suffer the consequences. And I'm going to to go back to that several times today. Nehemiah was a Jewish cupbearer to King Artaxerxes, if you're not familiar with the scripture, in the Medo persian Empire. When he was told about the destruction in Jerusalem, he asked the king for leave of absence to return to help rebuild Jerusalem. The king not only gave him leave, but commissioned him to rebuild the walls and gave him all the provisions and help that he would need to complete the job. Like the city of Jerusalem in the days of Ezra, when we receive Jesus as our Lord, the first thing that God does is rebuild his temple within us. We are God's temple. God's spirit lives in us, but our walls and our gates are still in need of repair. As the Holy Spirit restores us, he trains our wills to choose thoughts, values, and behaviors that bring him praise, not us. Gates represent access points in our hearts that hinge on guarded choices that we make. When evil elements of deception have infected many of our pivotal choices, our gates become rusty doors of indifference, unaccustomed to closing to protect us from the cold wind of worldly thinking. As long as we remain apathetic, lethargic, and passive, the demonic spirits behind our infected choices stay concealed and go unnoticed because the enemy has free access to our heart and our minds. It is only when we shake off complacency and close the gates of our minds to demonic thinking that all hell will break loose. When Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem, the first thing he did was survey the walls and assess the problem. The work of the Holy Spirit puts us in touch with our brokenness. However, many people refuse to face their problems head on. I know I did before completely turning to the Lord. I struggled for years with sin in our marriage. But until we take equal ownership of our issues, the Holy Spirit cannot help us solve them. So whatever it is that you're dealing with, as long as we insist that a terrible situation is not our fault or we blame our junk on someone else, our walls are still broken. We remain Pharisees who cross the street to avoid the pain, or Jews who yell crucify. It is only as we take responsibility for a problem that we begin to be part of the solution. The first to overcoming that obstacle is overcoming fear. Nehemiah found that fear was the primary detractor of God's work being accomplished in people's lives. And it's time the church, not just this church, but the Big C Church, start overcoming its fear of upsetting people and stand up for biblical values in this country. (laughs) 
Fear is faith in the wrong God. In 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. God even put 365 verses in the Bible about fear because he knew that we would struggle with it in our daily lives. And those words are our weapon. His words are our weapon to fight against fear. His word is our sword. When God opens a door of opportunity or the Holy Spirit is prompting you to move or act, whether it's giving to the church to be able to rebuild this roof, whatever it is, you will encounter oppositions from three areas, just like Nehemiah encountered opposition. The first is yourself. You're going to sense opposition from yourself. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't talk to that person. Maybe I shouldn't do what God is calling me to do because it's a big step and it's going to be a big commitment. When fear enters your mind, you need to cast those fearful thoughts aside, trusting that God is with you and that he has given you what it takes to move on in whatever new thing that he is calling you to do. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. The second area of resistance is others. For whatever reason, some people are not thrilled to witness others moving forward in Christ or in new things. For this reason, you need to rely on confidence from God to proceed forward regardless of what others say. And the third area is our arch enemy. And he may be putting those fearful thoughts in your mind and having others harass or impede your walk with Christ. Satan doesn't want you to gain new areas of growth or claim new territory for God's kingdom's work. You must resist his attacks and courageously walk through the doors that God has opened to you. Hebrews 10.35 says, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. So the next time an opportunity or a prompting from the Holy Spirit comes your way, shake off fear, dust off what the naysayers say, and stomp over the obstacles that the enemy has put in your path, for God is with you. And, is, and if God is with you, then who can be against you? And all you have to do is look at my Facebook page or Twitter page or any of that to see the naysayers out there constantly, constantly attacking you. When we put our faith in Jesus, we experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fear cannot exist where the Holy Spirit exists. Fear is the most socially accepted sin in the church. Fear is a serial killer the prime suspect in the death of more people on the planet than any other disease combined. Fear in every form has been linked to heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disorders, mental illness, and many other sicknesses. Fear is the welcome mat to demonic activity in our lives. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, for I, the Lord your God, Hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. And in a time like we are facing now, know that he is here helping you. And it's important to understand how critically God views fear. For example, King David committed adultery with Bathsheba and murdered her husband Uriah. Yet God did not remove him from the throne. On the other hand, King Saul feared the people whom God had called him to lead. He disobeyed the Lord, and the Lord tore the kingship from him and gave it to David. Nehemiah's cure for his people's anxiety was simply to remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Fear dismembers and disfigures our perspective of God, making him seem like a powerless pawn controlled by our circumstances. But when we remember the Lord, and recount his works, we begin to reform our vision of his greatness in our hearts. As we meditate on his greatness, confidence begins to sprout in the soil of our faith, and soon fear's fantasy is unmasked, flogged, and sent fleeing. Nehemiah's incredible success was dependent on his learning to master fear and his refusal to let go of his destiny. He and the Israelites persevered, and even though they literally had to build a wall with a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other, they managed to finish their project in fewer than two months. Their project was so threatening that their enemies relentlessly tried to stop them to the bitter end. 
Whether we are cleaning toilets or leading a country, we should never lose sight of the fact that whenever we are doing something for God, we are doing a great work that makes our life worth living. When we forget that we are doing what matters to God, we leave the gates of our hearts unguarded and accessible to enemy influence. We have to remember who you are and who we are, who each one of us are. In a class that my wife Jen and I, which I want to thank her, by the way, for one being my wife and one being an incredible woman, but going with me to all these events that I go to and speaking to all the things, and she is my rock, and I want to thank her for the love that we have in our marriage. It is so important to understand the authority that Christ and that God has given each and every one of us and who we are in God and in Christ. And one of the primary targets of the enemy is our self-esteem. That is where his strongest attacks are often aimed, which is why I don't look at the stuff on Twitter and Facebook and all that other junk. He does not want us to know who we are. The enemy tries his best to keep us from feeling and, if possible, from even knowing that if we are in Christ, we are in God, Colossians 3.3, that we are redeemed, Galatians 3.13, that we are a new creation, a child of God, a royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2.9, that we are holy, a joint heir with Christ, a citizen of heaven, John 1.12, Galatians 3.26, Ephesians 2.6, and Philippians 3.20. We are a saint in whom dwells the Holy Spirit, Galatians 4, 6. We are the crown of God's creation created in God's image, Genesis 1, 26. We are a little lower than God himself, Psalm 8, 5. The enemy wants to steal all recognition from us of who we are. He's out to destroy us, and one of his major tactics is to keep us from thinking about how sinful, fat, skinny, stupid, weak, ugly, pathetic, and hopeless we are, and you have to know who you are in Christ. And I'm going to read it again and go a little slower and not put the scripture in. You're redeemed. You're a new creation. You're a child of God, a royal priesthood, holy, a joint heir with Christ, a citizen in heaven, a saint in whom dwells the Holy Spirit, the crown of God's creation, created in God's image, a little lower than God himself. So when you doubt yourself, so if you ever doubt yourself or the direction that you are going or you have fear that is cascading into your life, you remember who you are in Christ and you remember who you are in God and who's much more powerful than this world who can bring you to wherever you need to go and wherever he is taking you to go. And it is important to note that it was only after Nehemiah reassured himself of his identity that he had the discernment to recognize that God did not inspire the negative declarations made against him. They were not from God. Fear clouds our convictions and distorts our discernment. When we fill our minds with negative predictions or allow our thoughts to manipulate us into thinking about all the possible destructive outcomes of our mission, we invite fear to paralyze our progress. Adam was never afraid of God until he broke God's commands, and then he hid. To overcome fear, we must have faith, and you cast fear out in the name of Jesus and fill it with the Holy Spirit. And just like Nehemiah confessed the sins of his people, then he repented and he turned towards God. That is what we need to do as a nation. In Proverbs 14, 34, we are told that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. In 2 Chronicles 14, it states, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. How many of you think that we need healing in our land today? And how far we have fallen in just the four years that I've been in Congress. Just the four years that I've been in Congress. Not too long ago when I was debating on the House floor against the so-called Equality Act, where it redefined gender, I quoted Tony Evans' commentary Bible about what the Word of God says about gender identity at Deuteronomy 22.5. This is exactly what I said on the floor of the House of Representatives. 
Men and women equally share in bearing the image of God, but he has designed them to be distinct from and complementary towards one another. The gender confusion that exists in our culture today is a clear rejection of God's good design. Whenever a nation's laws no longer reflect the standards of God, that nation is in rebellion against him and will inevitably bear the consequences. I'm going to read that last line again. Whenever a nation's laws no longer reflect the standards of God, that nation is in rebellion against him and will inevitably bear the consequences. As soon as I got done reading that, before I even walked away from the microphone, Jerry Nadler, a Democrat from New York, retorted this, and this is exactly what he said. Mr. Stubbe, what any religious tradition ascribes as God's will is no concern of this Congress. You can go back and watch the video. It's exactly what he said. So there you have it. They are now even saying it out loud, despite the fact that right above us, as we were debating, says the words, the only words on the entire floor of the House of Representatives, in God we trust. Since government was established and created by God as part of his conventional rule over his creation, and since he alone is the standard by which laws are right and wrong, James 4.12, what he says on any and every subject ought to be the highest concern of Congress. God does not adjust his righteous and just standards for anyone. Only when a government submits to God's governance can it hope to be rescued, Isaiah 33.22. The mere fact that we have elected leaders solemnly declaring on the floor of our house that God's will has no place in Congress is a testament to why our nation is in the level of sheer chaos, violence, injustices, and debt that we see today. So I've never seen a stool with a little water holder on it. That's pretty cool. Fancy, they're fancy in Inglewood. <laughs> Daniel 5.21 says, The Most High God is ruler, ruler over the realm of mankind, and that he sets over it whoever he wishes. This world is God's creation. This is his house. His rules stand. It doesn't matter if peer pressure or sinful desires cause a myriad of people to rise up and declare that other rules should be installed. God is the one who sits over all, and he is the one to determine how things are to run. Now, if we as a people choose to go against his rules, then we will pay the price, and we're seeing that. All you have to do is turn on the TV to see it. When we formed our nation, we declared that we would operate as one nation under God. We acknowledged that this was God's house. Those who founded our nation may not have lived up to or by his standards in all things, but he is calling us to live according to his standards of good and evil. Our nation and our elected leaders are to seek to reward good behavior while punishing evil behavior. Romans 13 puts it like this, for rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise for the same, for it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger, who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. It was Romans 13. Today, we have the opposite happening in our country. You commit a, commit a heinous crime, you're set free. You break our laws at the border, you get taxpayer benefits. The world is upside down, and God warned us about these times. Isaiah 5.20 says this, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, it says this, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last of days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form 
of godliness, but denying its power, having nothing to do with such people. God alone defines what makes good laws and good behavior and what is evil. If people would learn to operate by the rules of engagement that God has freely made known, our nation would take on a different template. If our leaders use their positions to bring about justice and righteousness as God defines it, in order to promote unity, we would experience the freedom and divine covering God offers a nation as he defines it. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 4.8 that nations become great when they follow God's righteous laws. If we are going to invite in help and healing in our country, we need to strive toward enacting and following God's righteous laws. Freedom cannot flourish in a nation apart from safety. Freedom cannot flourish in any nation apart from justice and righteousness. Freedom flourishes when governments rule according to God's standards. And when they don't, it is our role as believers in the body of Christ to pray for them and to stand up for biblical principles. It is our responsibility to respectfully challenge leaders when they clearly deviate from God's standards. 1 Samuel 15, 10 through 23, and Matthew 14, 1 through 4. That is our job and our role, church, to stand up. There is so much deception in the world today that it's difficult to identify where we are and where we need to go. That's why we all need a tool. We need something to help us discriminate and discern through all the muck and the mire of the political mess. Our tool has to be the divine standard of the Word of God. The first question we must always ask publicly on any subject is what does God say about that and what does his scripture declare? And going to scripture first, you are affirming God's rightful place as a sovereign ruler over all. He rules the nations and their leaders, Proverbs 8.15. It is he who sets the standard, not Washington. There is not one issue in government or politics to which God has not given a precept or a principle on how it should be viewed or governed. Not one. As Isaiah 8.20 says, if they do not speak according to his word, it is because they have no dawn. In other words, they can't see straight. There appears to be a lot of blind lists right now when it comes to the issue of justice, immigration, taxation, foreign relations, sanctity of life, and I could talk a whole sermon on that, gender, morality, family, and so much more. God has spoken on all of these subjects, and he has not stammered. It is all in his word. God must be included in government in order to have government function in the way God designed it to function. He must be included if a government is going to promote good and keep evil from proliferating. Psalm Psalm 7211 says, And let all kings bow down before him, and all nations serve him. Our nation has devolved in so many ways that we must rise up and promote God's standard once again. This is not a time for cute Christianity. This is not a time for popular politics. It's not a time to placate to the masses, and there are a lot of them right now. This is the time for Christians to take their stand, and it starts with you. If you don't have a revival and a repentance in your own heart, then the church cannot have revival. And our community cannot have revival, and our state and our nation can't have revival. It's up to each and every one of you. If we are to ever become unified as the body of Christ, we will make a difference. We will have an influence. We will bring about good in a nation that desperately, desperately needs it. But we will only do this when we start to bring in our biblical worldview to the ballot box and everywhere else. When we decide to take God's rule seriously, we will lead the way on the issues that plague us as a nation. Ineffective Christians are one of the major problems in our country today because we have been Christians in name only. We have not been kingdom-minded. We've given in to the pressure and have become more culturally-minded or politically-minded, and thus we have contributed to the chaos in our culture. But now is the time, in the midst of the chaos, to step forward and take a stand. 
I ask you to be strong and courageous, to be faithful, to be immovable, to be bold and strong in the power of his might. I ask you to continue to fight for our freedom, to continue to pray for our nation, and continue to fight the battle that God has placed you in so I don't have to tell my grandchildren about the dream that once was America. God bless each and every one of you for what you do for the body of Christ, and God bless America. One more time, let's thank the Lord for the Congress one, one more time. And his wife. Thank you. Thank you. Now look, look, you're up. Stay up. You're fine. I know he's so much nicer than I am. <laughs> Guys, what a great, powerful, strong, biblical message. I mean, that's it. I do this for a living. And that was a great message. It's a solid message. And uh, I think he took me seriously. <laughs> when I want him to preach, what do you think? I think he took me up on it, amen? Praise the Lord. I'd like to have, have you come again sometime, this time next year. Wouldn't you? Why not? And preach. I love that. But you got to bring her with you. All right. Hey, guys. Listen, we don't want to end church today. Had a great message. Fantastic. But there's one, there's one law that's above every law. And that's this one. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And the church is... Christian in name only. We've been that also. We've made up all other kinds of ways to get to heaven. And they're bull. They're bull. It's just not going to fly. God had one son. Take a wild guess what his name was. Period. That's it. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He loves you. But somehow the church has hijacked Jesus. And we've added this rule and we've added that and we've done this and whatever. And it's just crazy. I was a hell raiser. I didn't grow up knowing the Lord. Okay? And matter of fact, it turned me off. They want your money. That's why I say if you can't give cheerfully, what? I do that. I do that on purpose. I don't want people coming here thinking that's what we're about. No. We're about Jesus Christ. About loving Him. Amen? And so today, guys, listen. Great message. Powerful message. Strong. But as good as that message was, if you leave here without Jesus Christ in your heart... You've really lost everything. You can gain the whole world. Lose your own soul. And so do you know the Lord today? You might say, well, Pastor, I go to church. Well, that's not knowing the Lord. You might say, I'm a good person. That's nice, but that's not knowing the Lord. Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone? Well, it's confirmed. That's not knowing the Lord. Do you know the Lord? You see, you're saved. If you die today, boom, I'm in. Why? Because I know you. <laughs> I know you, Jesus. You're my Savior. I believe in you. I'm not ashamed of you. I don't believe in you just right here. I believe in you down in my gut. If you haven't done that, would you do that today? You might say, how do I do that? Well, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I'm not any more special than you are. Are you kidding me? But the Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth, Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the what? dead, you shall be what? Saved. So what's that mean? If you'll today pray, I'll help you with that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to help you. But you'll mean it down in your heart. He'll answer your prayer today. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus, when he resurrected, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father where he ever lives to do what? Make intercession for us. He's praying for you right now. Isn't that weird? He's praying for you right now that you'll pray to him. Can I lead you in that prayer today? 
say. He talked about the laws and boy, that God's law. That's great. Right on. But the greatest thing you'll ever do is put your faith in Jesus Christ. And it's needful. You're not getting out of here alive on this planet. And one day you're going to stand before the Lord. And I want you to, I want you to say, I know you. Amen. Let's pray together. Would you bow your heads with me? So today, if there's questions, doubts in your mind, why don't we end that today? Before you turn that key in that car and leave this campus, why don't today you just nail that with me right here? I'm going to put my faith in you, Jesus. And mean business today. What does that mean? Be sincere, not playing, not trying to please mama, somebody else. But you mean it. If you're there, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done plenty wrong. I'm the sinner, not you. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin, Lord. And Lord, I want you to know, best I know how, best I know how, Lord, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead for me. And I believe you love me. I matter to you. I, I'm valuable to you. I'm not garbage to you. You love me. You came for me. And so, Lord, today, from down deep inside my gut, I want to tell you, I believe that. I'm not putting my confidence in a church, in a pastor, in myself, in a government. I'm not doing any of that. My confidence is in you, Jesus Christ. Save me today. Come into my life and live through me. And though I don't understand it all, I do understand this. I mean what I'm saying. I mean what I'm saying. And I know if I do that, you said you'd save me. You'd write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I would have everlasting life. I would never go to hell. So, Lord, I want to thank you for that. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed, not to embarrass you, I wouldn't do such a thing. How many would raise their hand and say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you today. And Pastor, I meant that from the bottom of my heart. I meant that today. I meant that today. A lot, a lot, a lot of hands today. God loves a snot out of you. You hear me? He loves you so much. God bless you today. Lord, thank you for an incredible day. Thank you for a great time of music, a great time in the Word with, uh, with our congressman. I thank you for him and his wife who took the time to come down and be with us today. And then to break open God's Word. Thank you, Lord, for the many scriptures. Thank you that it was an opinion that he gave. It was your Word that he gave. And it was strong. It was understandable. We appreciate it. Bless him, Lord and his wife and his family. Touch them, Lord. Thank you for people like him. He gives us hope. He gives us hope that we have a country where there are people that care. Help us, Lord. That's what I wanted today, Lord. I wanted our people to have some hope, some hope. And I think that happened today. So bless him, Lord. Lord, especially bless those that put their faith in you today. Help us and others come alongside of them. Let them know they're loved and help them grow in you, Lord. We give you credit for every good thing in our life. And we fall at your feet. And Lord, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord today. And we give you credit again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you want to run out front? Or you'll stay here? You'll go out front? You just, okay. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. See ya. Thanks for coming to church. Amen. It's me next week. You don't get him again. I know. Broke your heart, didn't it? See you. God bless you. Amen. Don't 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 mug them, all right? Hey.